Welcome on board Narrowboat Isness. It's always good to know what the weather is doing over the next few days, especially if I'm wanting to cruise up the cut to go and get essential supplies. Seeing a bit of calm weather before the storm arrives, it's a good idea to get up the cuts, get the supply, get the job done, get it out of the way. And that's what I did. I took the boat up the cut, not far, about a quarter of a mile to the next bridge. And that's where the delivery driver had dropped off my fuel supply for me. And with the help of a fellow boater, I was able to transfer my supplies across to my boat. Once the supplies were on board, it was a case of deciding whether to go and turn the boat around up at Bosley, which is about nearly a mile away, or do I simply just reverse? And the easiest option was to reverse. If you haven't got bow thrusters like me, 
that controls the boat moving left and right at the front of the boat, then it's more difficult. So there was a, a bit of stopping and starting, twisting and shifting here and there. This week my connection with nature has been about looking at detail. So many times we can be walking along the canal towpath and missing so many beautiful things. We have a large picture of a landscape out there. But within that picture, there are many more pictures to be seen. When I'm walking along the canal, I like to tune in and go closer and closer and see the detail on that tree. So many more beautiful pictures and images to be seen when you zoom in. Become that microscope.
this time of the year along the canal, there's a lot of brooding going on. And with brooding, you get disagreement, shouting, aggressive behavior. I'm talking about wildlife. I'm talking about the ducks and the geese. It's the males, the gander of the geese and the mallard of the ducks. With high testosterone levels, they display egotistical behavior. Showing off and competing against males for the female mate. This week I really enjoyed watching lapwings in flight. They're called peewits, that's the common name for them. And they're called that because of their distinctive call. There's around 140,000 pairs of these birds in the UK at this time of the year. But the numbers are rapidly declining. And this is due to radical changes in farming. These birds, especially the males, put on a fabulous acrobatic display when in flight, zigzagging and wobbling and twisting and turning and diving. still on the subject of birds, don't forget to feed them. Like myself and James, my boating friend, we love to feed the birds, put some seeds out for them. Let's look after our feathered friends. At the end of the day, we're all related. We're all part of this. Wildlife can project its negative energy onto its own kind, as can mankind. After a dramatic fight, 
the goose or the, the duck can just fly away. They vigorously shake the bodies and flap the wings, releasing excess energy. And they can just carry on then, forget about it, like nothing happened, like water off a duck's back. But for humans, it's more difficult. It's not as easy as that. Our ego gets in the way, but we need the ego. It's part of the brain that's tribal conditioned and it's there to help us, protect us, keep us safe. But it has a habit of being a devil at times. It can trigger us into confrontation, retaliation and even rejection. It can make us feel deflated, depressed. I'm sure many of you watching will have experienced them actions or them feelings. Last week I became a victim. Well, that's what I thought at the time. I was a victim of verbal abuse, aggressive behavior, and there was no apparent reason for it at the time. No provocation from me. I didn't retaliate, but it left me upset, sad. I had this emptiness, I had this numbness, and I couldn't carry on doing the things I wanted to do. I was about to do some filming and all that creative excitement that was within me before it happened had just gone. It had just gone. Sometimes when you get these things happen, it's not that easy just to forget about it. And I came back to the boat and in silence contemplated on what had just happened. For me, it brought a lot of emotions up and brought back a lot of my childhood memories. Memories of being bullied at school. Escaping the bullies in the school, I would spend hours walking miles along the beach under the white cliffs, watching the rolling waves, listening to the sound of them crashing against the rocks. I'd watch the seagulls in the sky soaring away and squawking. I'd cycle off into the countryside, find the nearest wood, climb the highest tree. I wanted to touch the sky and jump on a cloud. And if the weather was bad, I'd head into town, lock myself away on the third floor in a toilet cubicle at the local department store. I'd spend hours in there. For me, it was like my monastery. It was a, a retreat. It was a safe place. The next day, I had to go back to school and face the same thing again. This went on for years. In them days, nobody questioned you why you were out of school. Was I sad or upset during the time I was in this solitude running away? No, I was, for me, it was like an adventure. It was like I was an Indiana Jones. But what was happening there was that all my trauma was getting blocked. I've seen all this before. I've seen all these memories come back of my childhood but I've never really looked at it. I like, we all, a lot of us do this, is we push it to one side. We shouldn't lock things away. We should look at it. It's like grieving. If you, know, if you lose somebody, you've got to allow that grieving to go ahead and you'll feel a lot better if you do that. This incident has made me look at the bigger picture to see what's really going on. Why am I suffering all these years later? I know the bullies shouldn't have done what they did, but at the end of the day, I'm creating a lot of my suffering myself. That angry person has brought me a teaching, a lesson, which has been seen and accepted. And like dust settles, so as these memories for now, but they will rise again, or maybe something else will rise. It's great to look at it, look closely, find out what it's all about. Thank you for joining me on this episode of Narrowboat Isness. I hope you've enjoyed it. A big thank you to all my subscribers out there who have um, come on board to support me. Thank you for doing so. And if you haven't already subscribed, it is free. 
And thank you for the lovely comments as well. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you back on board the Isness very soon. Thank you.